this lab, we have HTTP server connected to two routers, R1 and R2. R1 and R2 are the gateway routers for the HTTP server. There is VRRP, virtual router redundancy protocol configured between router 1 and router 2 to provide redundancy gateways for the HTTP server. R1 is configured as the master gateway and R2 is configured as the backup gateway. The VRRP heartbeat is passing through the switch. This is domain A. We have another domain, domain B, wants to get routed to the HTTP server. Domain B has R3 router and R4. Domain A and domain B are different domains and they want to provide redundancy to each other. R1 and R2 is connected to R3 and R4 with full redundancy. R3 and R4 provides VRRP for R1. This is for the connection between R1 and R3 and the connection between R1 and R4. And same for R2. Connection for R1 with R3 and R4 is a VLAN connection, VLAN 11. Over VLAN 11, VRRP is configured. VRRP heartbeat for R3 and R4 is passing through the direct connection between R3 and R4. And from the side of R1, connection to R3 and connection to R4 is configured in one Ethernet trunk. And R3 and R4 is providing multi-chassis lag for R1. And same configuration for R2. Now R3 is configured as master gateway for R1 and R2 VLANs. And R4 is configured as backup gateway. This is for the VRRP. And same for the multi-chassis leg. It means that the connection from R1 to R3 is the master connection and it's in up state and the backup from R1 to R4 is the backup interface. It's in a standby and it's in the down state. It's not working. If the master connection or the up connection between R1 and R3 is facing failure, the connection from R1 to R4 will become main connection and in this case R4 will turn to the master state. The Ethernet trunk from R1 to R3 and R4 is configured with the same IP address in VLAN 11 and its gateway is virtual IP for R3 and R4 and same for R2. Now there must be routing between domain B and domain A so domain B can get the route for the HTTP server domain B and domain A decided not to use dynamic protocols they use static routing R3 configure a static route to the HTTP server and the next hope is R1 the IP address of Ethernet trunk configured at R1 and same for R4 if there is a failure at R1 R2 will become active and main gateway for the HTTP server so we have to provide redundancy for the static routes there will be backup static route to R2 if R1 has a failure or its connections has a failure with domain B the backup static route to R2 should be working if there is a failure at R1 R1 entirely went down or its two interfaces went down the main static route 
from R3 and R4 will still be valid. The backup static route from R3 and R4 to R2 will not be active. This is the issue here in this design. The reason is static route from R3 and R4 is configured via a VLAN interface, VLAN if interface, and the PRP heartbeat and the VLAN is passing through the connection between R3 and R4. The connection between R3 and R4 is not down, is not facing any issues. So the VRRP will still be valid. The VLAN 11 will still be valid, even if the interfaces from R1 and R3 went down. Static route to R1 will still be up. This is the issue here. The solution to this issue is to use NQA for the static route. NQA will allow us to perform ICMP tests to R1, to the IP address of R1 on the Ethernet trunk. If this IP address was not reachable, the static route will be invalid, will be suppressed from the routing table, and the backup static route to R2 will be working. Let's head to the lab now. This is the HTTP server. The gateway address 10.1 is configured between router 1 and router 2 as the VRRP virtual gateway. This is the VLAN 10 for the HTTP server and the virtual IP for the VRRP is 10.1. The priority is 120. R1 will be the master for the HTTP server and port giga ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 0 from R1 in port switch mode, link type access and in VLAN 10. This is the configuration of R2. We can find the VLAN interface here with the virtual IP as 10.1 and the master at R1 because R1 has the priority of 120. The default priority 100. Display VRRP brief. We can find that for VLAN 10, it's the backup. At R1, display VRRB brief for VLAN 10, it's the master, the domain of R3 and R4. R3 and R4 has a static route going to the destination HTTP server to the next hop R1, which is the master for the HTTP server, and the backup static route to R2. We can find that there are two static routes for the same destination network, two different next hops. R1. We can find that this IP address is configured at Ethernet trunk 1. Display interface Ethernet trunk 1. Ethernet trunk 1 has two physical interfaces Ethernet. 0 slash 0 slash 0 and 0 slash 0 slash 1. The Ethernet trunk going to R3 and R4 has an IP address. This IP address is the next hope for the first static route from R3 to get the HTTP server. Going back to R3, the backup next hope with preference 100. This is the backup static route. This IP address should be configured at R2 this IP address and we can find here that it's configured at Ethernet trunk 2. Display interface Ethernet trunk 2. Two physical interfaces here Giga Ethernet 002 and 000. 002 and 000. It's connected towards the domain of R3 and R4. From R3 and R4 we configured multi chassis lag or E trunk. Now let's check the IP connectivity from R3 to the server. Ping 192.168.10.5, which is the IP address of HTTP server, 
and it's pingable. Now let's shut down the Ethernet trunk from R1 to R3 and R4, which means that R1 should not be reachable from R3 and R4. Before shutdown, we can check the routing table for the network and the network is in the routing table with the next hope address R1 at R1. We shut down the interface now. Back again to R3. We can ping the next hope request timed out. I'm going to check the routing table again for network 192.168.10.0. The network is still in the routing table with the same next hope IP address, which is now unavailable. R3 cannot detect that the next hope unavailable because it's learned via the VLAN interface, VLAN interface 11. We have a connection between R3 and R4. Over this connection, VLAN 11 is defined and this interface is also up and available, which means R3 cannot detect that the next hope unavailable. We can check the physical interface, Giga Ethernet 000. We can find that VLAN 11 is available. This is why the static route is still available. I cannot ping the server now. It's not pingable. NQA, network quality analysis. We can run NQA ICMP test to test the ICMP reachability to the next hope. If the next hope is unavailable, is not pingable, the NQA ICMP test will be failed. If it's associated with the static root, it can suppress this static root and the backup static root can be used. Let's now go to the system view and configure the NQA ICMP test. NQA test instance and the administrator name R3, R1 and name of NQA test instance is ICMP. Test type is ICMP. And the destination address, the next hope of R1. Frequency to run the ICMP in a frequent style. Run the test every five seconds. I can add prop count as one. This is the number of probe times in one test. And finally, start now to start the test immediately. Display NQA results. We can find that the result of the ICMP test is failed. I need to associate the NQA to the static root. I'll copy the first main static root track. NQA and the NQA test administrator name and the NQA test name. We press enter. We succeeded to modify the root. This is the configuration of the NQA test R3 and R1, and the NQA name is R1 R3. We need to adjust this administrator name from R1, R3 to R3, R1. Let's check again the routing table for 192.168.10.5 and we can find that the next hope is modified to 10.234.234.4. The backup static route is now used. We can ping the backup next hope but I'm unable to ping the IP address 192.168.10.1 and even I used the source IP address in the ping, I cannot ping the gateway of the HTTP server, but I can ping the 
IP address of VLAN 10, the VLAN of the server, configured at R2. The reason is that R1 is the master gateway. So after the traffic received at R2, it must be forwarded to R1. For the return traffic, R1 doesn't have any information about the network between R3, R4, and R2. At R1, display IP routing table and the network is not existing. I can configure this network from R1 to R2. I can find the network now is in the routing table. Let's ping again. It's pingable now. I can ping the server. And the HTTP server is towards R2. Let's make the Ethernet trunk up again from R1 side. Display NQA results from R3 side. There is success here. I can see success here. Display IP routing table 192.168.10.5. I can see that the main next hope is back again. Ping again. I can ping also for the e trunk multi chassis lag. Please refer to my video, and the link of this video is in the description section. Thank you for viewing this video. I hope it can add a good value to you.